Hey y'all, so just the other day I finished You Look Re Different, I'm sorry, You Look Different in Real Life by Jennifer Castle. Um, it was just one that I stumbled across at the library and it seemed like it might have some potential. Um, the flap explains that there are five kids who, when they were all in kindergarten, were picked to be in this documentary. Um, the people making the documentary just wanted to follow the lives of regular kids and kind of follow their stories. And they, after the first one, of them in kindergarten following these five kids. Um, it was pretty successful, and so then they decided that every five years they should do a follow-up movie. So this book revolves around when they come back when the kids are 16 to do that one. And I loved this book. Um, I just kind of went into it being like, oh, this is kind of unique. You know, I haven't read anything like that yet. Um, but I loved it. It was so, so good. And my sister and I have talked before about, um, she's not as drawn to YA like I am because she often finds the characters flat. Um, she thinks they are more developed and well-rounded in novels written for adults, you know, whatever. And I can, sometimes I agree with that, but there's always exceptions. But this book was not like that at all. These characters are incredibly deep, very well-rounded. There's amazing, amazing character development in this book. I was constantly impressed. I also loved, so it's in the, um, it's in first person from Justine, one of the kids, and I just loved the way she interpreted things. She'd like see people's faces or their physical reactions and analyze it in her head, and I don't feel like we get that too much in YA, but we do that as real people. You see someone like shift away, and in your brain you're like, do they not like me? Are they, you know, you're analyzing why they're doing that. Whereas in YA, it's often just like, he shifted away awkwardly and then it moves on. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But she's just constantly thinking about it and trying to figure out her own self by figuring out other people. I don't know. It was, it was pretty coming of age. It was understanding who you are. It was just done so well. I loved it. Um... And it focused a lot on not assuming things about people, which I love. I'm really big on that. Like, give people the benefit of the doubt. You don't know what they're going through. And obviously, it's hard to do that. And sometimes I don't follow my own advice. I can't, I can't always make it work for me. I still get mad at drivers, even though I don't know why they're being stupid and whatever. Anyway, <laughs> but she goes on that a lot because um, within the group of the five kids that are in these movies... There's Justine, let's see if I can remember all their names. Justine is the main character, we follow her. Then there's Rory, and she and Rory were best friends when they were little, and now they're not. And you find out what happened as you go along through the story. Then there's Felix and Nate, they were also best friends back, way back when, in the other, in the other movies that we learn about in the book. And now they're not either, and so you've gotta like learn their story. And then there's another girl named Kira who's going through a whole lot of drama on her own whole lot of drama on her own. Sorry, that didn't come out clear. Um, and so Justine has made assumptions about the Felix and Nate storyline, and it turns out that what she thought was real is totally wrong. She was way off base and was judging them inappropriately, for lack of a better word. Um, she's also been judging Kira and finds out more about Kira, and Rory's just her own puzzle that Justine has to figure out. Um, Rory is, she has autism, um, and I loved the way that was portrayed in this book, because since Justine and Rory were such good friends when they were little, when Rory reacts to loud noises or situations that are hard for her, Justine remembers how that was when they were best friends as kids, and so she can be like, like at one point Rory says thank you to someone, which to us is nothing, like they helped her, so she says thanks. But Justine, since we're in Justine's head as the narrator, she then goes, she says something about how she recognizes that it's a big deal that Rory remembered that she should say thank you, that that was the socially appropriate thing to do, but then not just remembered, but then acted on what she remembered. That because of Rory's autism, um, she often doesn't do those things, like social things. And so it was really cool that's the kind of, not that that's super deep right there, that's not a really deep example, but it's that sort of thing in this book that made it stand out to me and that made it so real and so great because I recognize that as well. In my preschool, we had a boy who um, 
hasn't been diagnosed with anything. They're doing, they're observing and doing some testing and whatever, but he struggles and has um, autistic like symptoms and reactions to things. And he ended up leaving our preschool to go to a specialty preschool where they could watch him and figure out how best to help him. But he came back for our end of the year program and he gave me and my, and the other teacher a hug. And that was big. And we knew him before and we knew that that was hard for him. And he walked up to both of us and he, to me, he goes, Miss Megan, I'd like to give you a hug. And you could tell that he and his mom had talked about giving us hugs and had rehearsed what to say and it had been this big discussion. Are you okay with giving a hug? Are you sure you're okay with this? You know, things like that. And he gave us hugs and they were brief and kind of awkward. He wasn't into it, but that was a big step for him. And it's the little insights like that, that Justine has about Rory that I just loved about this book. And I also loved seeing someone with autism who's still living a typical normal life because there's so many of them. And I, we don't see things like that a lot in media, I feel like, or when it's done, it can be exaggerated um, to be like, oh, look what we did, right? And so it was just great having that in here because um, she was just another character. And she's kind of a main character, but obviously Justine is the main character. Um, and she was just there and it was Rory and it wasn't, it wasn't odd or it shouldn't have been unique. You know what I mean? Hopefully this is making sense again. Um, but it was just so great having her there and having her just be a regular person with her own unique stresses and issues and whatever, because everybody has them. Um, so like I said, it's kind of a coming of age, slightly romancy. Um, it was so good. I just really recommend it. I love the depth that the characters had. I love their interactions. It was also very well done because there are those five kids all together. And it's all from Justine's point of view, but you never felt like one, like you didn't understand one character. There was always enough of all of them that it fit so well, and then they were this unit and this group. And so the balance in there was very well done by Jennifer Castle. I was very impressed with that as well, the balance of those five kids. And they're all unique and different in their own way, and it was so good. Just, ah, I don't really know what else to say besides it was so good. So she's awesome. Jennifer Castle, I mean, is awesome. And she's written... Apparently she wrote a book called The Beginning of After. Like I said, I just grabbed this off the library shelf. It caught my eye. So I'm excited to read more from her because I think that she's got a lot of potential. Um, so I highly, highly recommend You Look Different in Real Life by Jennifer Castle. It was published by Harper Teen. It's amazing. Check it out. Keep reading.